we have with us Dr. Mahipal Sachadev, Padam Sri awardee and chairman of Center for Sight. Hello, sir. Good to have you here. Hi. In your years, say 25 years of experience with refractive surgery, how has the journey been? And now, can you tell us about the latest technologies available with Center for Sight? Well, uh, I started refractive surgery maybe more than 30, 35 years ago. And uh, the initial journey was with what was known as radial keratotomy where we used a diamond knife, a blade to make radial incisions in the cornea. So what these uh, radial incisions did was that it would flatten the cornea and uh, the central portion was uh, left untouched. Uh, this was far from accurate. Uh, the outcomes were not very accurate. Cylindrical power correction was not very accurate and uh, patients were tending to have regressions and late what is called as hyperopic shift. Then uh, came in the era of what is known as excimer laser and uh, I uh, started the journey of excimer laser. It started as uh, PRK and we started that in about 1997 but very soon switched on to what is known as LASIK. So LASIK essentially entails making a full flap uh, except for a hinge where the flap is joined and then using the excimer laser and excimer laser is a burning laser and it takes away certain predetermined amount of corneal tissue. So if you have a myopic patient, so obviously the cornea needs to be flattened because a myopic patient needs a minus power. So you take a laser and you laser the central part. So instead of the cornea being steep, it tends to flatten and this is a permanent kind of a change. So that is we went on to uh, LASIK uh, just before uh, uh, 1999. I think that's when we started doing LASIK. Then on, I think we have been pioneers in uh, introducing the customized uh, or the abrometric linked uh, laser vision correction which we started in the year 2000 we again were uh, the first unit to get what was at that time known as the Xyoptics unit and again uh, uh, being associated with newer technologies uh, we were involved in bringing into India and even Southeast Asia what was known as the Femto LASIK that is the blade free LASIK uh, initially, as I told you, LASIK uh, involved making a flap and then burning away a certain amount of tissue. So this flap was earlier made by a microkeratome, which essentially was a blade being used to make the flap. And then we went on to the use of another laser, which is called as a femtosecond laser. And this femtosecond laser would create the flap. Obviously, it was far more refined, far more sophisticated and we could make flaps of uh, thickness of about say uh, 90 microns or 100, 110 microns. So the residual corneal thickness that remained was much better. So uh, this is something that again, uh, we were involved in and we were pioneered. And then this very femtosecond laser went on to bring in the technology of uh, lenticular extraction and we or our group uh, has been involved in bringing the lenticular technology globally uh, in the form of smile at that time. Now moving on from there, there were other techniques that came on and uh, uh, that is like the implantable columnar lens. We have been again doing it for more than 25, 27. Again, I would say the possibly the first uh, uh, implantable columnar lens was done by ourselves uh, way back in 1999 etc intracorneal ring segments etc so we, we worked on several techniques uh, the latest technology that is available now is again a lenticule based technology uh, which is called as silk silk is smooth incision lenticular keratomeliosis and this technology Right from the inception, uh, we have been uh, involved in center of sight. First, we worked with this uh, new femtosecond laser, which is 
faster, uh, smaller spot size. What that translates is that there is less energy that goes on to the cornea. Oh. And the separation, because there is no spot separation between this one micron spot, the separation uh, is much easier. So the first thing that we did was uh, way back in December 2018 was to uh, have this machine optimized for making a flap that mm -hmm. you do for the laces. Yes. And then on uh, the machine uh, underwent uh, certain changes, etc. The spot separation, right, how it was moving, the way the laser moved, etc. And on 4th of January 2020, the first global silk procedure uh, was done in set of a site uh, by us. And from there on, we have moved and we have seen and we have contributed data and the outcomes and the results have been uh, published uh, in peer-reviewed journals. And uh, now it has uh, got various approvals uh, and I think it is now commercially available and I think there are more than about 40, 45 units uh, that are there in the global market today. So the uh, development of this machine and this technology has been really exciting and I think this is today opened a significant new vista for the correction of myopic and astigmatic refractive errors for patients. Just to tell you about certain more things about silk, uh, when we are looking at the silk procedure, as of now the silk procedure can go up to minus 10 diopters and a cylindrical power of minus six. So that is the range for the patients to uh, undergo the silk procedure. Now what is important in this procedure is that the, the way the suction is applied, uh, there are almost negligible, during the entire study, there were no patients who lost suction. So therefore it makes it more safe. The next important thing in the silk procedure is that the spot and the line separation does not exist and the spot size is very small which is about 1 micron plus. What this leads to is that the dissection is very smooth. When you are removing the lenticule, so it's, if I give you an example, if you have a loaf of bread, how does a lenticule or a uh, extraction or a silk work? So if you have a loaf of bread, you just slice it, pick out a slice and take it out. So you can remove it through a very small incision, which could be two to three millimeters. So the incision has shrunk from a 22 millimeter uh, LASIK cut to a two to three millimeter. And therefore, what does this do? It makes the procedure safer because the biomechanical strength of the cornea remains better preserved. The number of nerves that are cut is less and therefore the incidence of patients feeling dry eye like symptoms post-operatively is less. And in this particular procedure, the other advantage even from the other lenticular procedure is that this, the shape of the lenticule is a biconvex lenticule. The convex means you have a convexity, it is biconvex. So if you look at even a normal camera lens, maybe what is being used just now, Majority or almost all the lenses are biconvex lenses. Uh, the other lenticule machines are doing what is known as a plano convex lenticule. A biconvex lenticule in our study, what we have found is that the higher order abrasions. Higher order abrasions means that there are there is the sphere and the cylinder that a patient has, but there is also something which is having uh, uh, these are deformations uh, that a person has in the vision. So these are higher order abrasions. Actually, it has been shown to even reduce the higher order abrasions. The induction of higher order abrasions is a constant for all refractive uh, procedures. So this has actually helped reduce the induction of higher order abrasions and in some cases even reduce the higher order abrasion that pre-existed in a particular cornea. So a Biconvex lenticule is a great step forward. The other thing is that the biconvex lenticule, because the nerves don't get cut like in a plano convex, the nerves go a little more inside. So the incidence, this has been shown by uh, some co uh, workers, uh, is that the incidence of dry eye 
even as compared to smile is lower in the silk procedure again a technicality is because it's a hard dog and it's a biconvex lenticule the folds or the undulations that you have in the bowman's membrane does not happen uh, or is much less as compared to the other lenticular procedure so this possibly helps you in betting bet, getting better quality vision so silk uh, uh, dr maaz i would say is a fantastic new technology that has come uh, which is giving quick fantastic visual recovery to a patient uh, it is safe outcomes are pretty good and the other important thing is that for people who love contact sports or people who really uh, are very active and energetic there are no specific restrictions that you have to impose on them post silk a flap can get dislocated or displaced even years after the procedure while in a silk procedure because it is a flapless procedure it gives you a much higher degree of safety throughout your life so you can tell your patient that he just can't play golf he can even do a boxing yes. immediately post surgery yes uh, i think uh, any type of contact sports is uh, fine and uh, 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 whether you want to do uh, scuba diving or whether you want to go hitch hiking trekking contact boxing whatever you want so i think the restrictions are very few uh, with good crisp quality vision that you get post silk procedure uh, we have now done several hundred procedures i think by far the largest uh, uh, number of procedures that have been done anywhere in the world and as i told you we have been working on this particular machine for the last uh, now it would be 6 years so thank you so much for your words on this procedure and we would be having further cutting edge technologies coming into center for sight as years go by thank you sure. sir follow planet lasik and post your queries to get answers from the experts